How's it going everybody? Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your first reef tank. So I'm going to go through the equipment that I'm using, why I'm using it, and I'm going to show you how to begin your nitrogen cycle. So stick with me. It's going to be a short list because this is a small tank, but we're going to get through it. So for equipment today we have a 15 gallon all-in-one system. So all-in-one just basically means the filtration is just built into the back compartment. There is no external filters. So by external filters, I mean hang on backs, canisters, sumps, etc. Um, this one comes with a small return pump rated about 110 gallons per hour, which is plenty for what I have planned for this aquarium. Um, the reason why I chose Lifeguard Aquatics is one, I haven't seen it locally yet, so it just caught my eye. Two, it was cost effective. Three, um, it's low iron glass, so it's ultra clear glass. So that's the main reasons why I chose this aquarium. Uh, I'm not going to be using a protein skimmer on this aquarium just for a simple fact that it's a small aquarium I'm going to be able to upkeep my maintenance and nutrients being nitrate and phosphates with simple water changes so that's going to be my main nutrient export so now we're going to move on to lighting so the lighting as you can see that I've chosen for this aquarium is the Aqua Illumination Prime HD now I've never tried this light before but the price point was not half bad I've heard a lot of good things it's small, it's compact, it's intense, and it's shown to grow corals very well. It also comes with a nice app that you can control your spectrum. So you can customize it just about any way you would like it to make your corals look visually more appealing. With that being said, lighting is very controversial. Um, I have tanks currently running the black box LEDs that you would see online for around $120. Um, and they grow corals just about as good as any light I've ever experienced. However, they don't come with app features, so you can't control your spectrum as well. And I've noticed that they don't make your corals look as great as some of the most fancy LEDs on the market. But for a bang for your buck, they're hard to beat. So don't think that you have to spend thousands on lighting. Keep it simple. On most of my tanks now, I'm running T5s. T5s are commonly outdated these days but I believe they are still producing some of the best growth um, and while they don't produce the best colors as I found from LEDs uh, they're very very close and the growth is in my opinion far superior so now we're going to talk about water quality so now that we have the big equipment out of the way let's talk about some of the fundamental equipment that you're going to want one we're going to talk about water you might be asking, water, I can just get it from my tap. While that's true, and I have seen some reef tanks do okay with tap water, a lot of city waters are just not suitable for a reef tank, so they're going to contain a lot of trace metals, a lot of nitrates, a lot of phosphates that are just going to wreak havoc in a reef aquarium. So when you have all those phosphates and nitrates and you're continuously adding them in via water changes, what's going to happen is that they're just going to keep building up and you have fish that are also going to contribute to nitrates and phosphates so it's going to cause some algae what you're going to have to do to control that algae is by media to remove it and that media isn't cheap so if you can buy a reverse osmosis unit I definitely recommend it if you're just getting into the hobby and you want to keep expenses down totally understand I would just go to your local water business see if they sell reverse osmosis especially in a small tank it's pretty cost effective maybe a few dollars a month uh, just to do your water change this is a 15 gallon system I might do 3-4 to four gallon water change every 2-3 to three weeks so it's not going to be very exp expensive to buy it externally but once you're looking into getting a bigger system 50, 60, 75 gallons etc you're definitely going to want to invest in a unit um, so now let's talk about test kits so now we're going to talk about test kits Probably one of the most neglected things that I see is people not buy test kits when they get into the hobby. I love test kits. I think they're worth the cost. They let you know what your tank is doing and where you are during the nitrogen cycle. So you'll notice that I place these in order. That's because when we start our nitrogen cycle, we're going to introduce an ammonia source. That ammonia source can come in many different ways, but the general consensus is you're going to add an organic. That organic is going to break down it's going to start to create ammonia. Now with a brand new aquarium we don't have enough bacteria to sustain life 
So why are we adding ammonia? So we're adding ammonia to, to simulate life. So what happens is when organics start to break down, we're going to get our ammonia and we're going to start building bacteria. That bacteria is then going to convert the ammonia to nitrite. Ammonia and nitrite are both very, very toxic to fish. They attack the gills, they suffocate. It's just, you want to learn how to properly cycle your tanks and a good set of test kits will allow you to do so. So after we've gotten our ammonia spike and it converts it to nitrite, we're then going to start to build nitrifying bacteria. So nitri nitrifying bacteria is going to eventually convert it to nitrates. Nitrates in low forms are non-toxic to fish. So all this is going to happen in a brand new tank, especially in salt water, in about four to six weeks. What you're going to want to introduce to get your ammonia source is going to be completely up to you. I'm going to be using Dr. Tim's ammonium chloride. Um, it's basically diluted pure ammonia. It's diluted to one drop per gallon, gives you two parts per million ammonia. You want to be around two to four parts per million ammonia. Uh, much higher, you start to have pH issues, which can slow down your slow down or stall your cycle. So you want to be careful. Now, if you do the raw shrimp method, which is basically just plop a raw shrimp into the tank and let it decay and slowly release ammonium, it's going to be a constant source of ammonia. So you won't have to worry about too much ammonia going in. Um, there's downsides and upsides to this. I just choose ammonium chloride just because it's an instant ammonia source and I don't have to wait up to a week for an ammonia spike for my nitrogen cycle to begin. So now that we've touched a little bit on nitrogen cycle, let's talk about your salt and how to mix it and how to measure it. So every salt's going to vary. You're going to want to follow the manufacturer's specific instructions. Uh, I'm personally using Red Sea. Uh, that's just my brand of choice. The calcium, the alkalinity, and the magnesium mixes in ranges that I like to keep. So that's why I use that specific brand of salt. When I mix my salt, I just use a five gallon container. I use my reverse osmosis, fill it up. And I use Red Sea uses about two and a half cups to get to 1.026 specific gravity. How I measure that, I use this device. This is called a refractometer. Now you can opt for a hydrometer. However, over time, they've proven to be a lot less accurate. And really what you want in a small aquarium especially is stability. So you want something that's gonna be accurate, something that you could adjust so it is accurate for long-term stability. So if, if you can, definitely invest in a refractometer as opposed to a hydrometer. Uh, they're just a lot better for measuring your salt and more accurate. So you, don't, you do not want your salinity to be jumping up and down because when evaporation happens, your salinity naturally will start to rise because the, wa the water leaves, but the salt remains. So when you're mixing your salt, you want to aim for around 1.025 to 1.026 specific gravity or 34 to 35 parts per thousand. So now that we've touched on the equipment that I'm using, we've touched on the nitrogen cycle and how to make it happen. We've touched on test kits, we've touched on your salt, we've touched on refractometers and how to measure your salt. We're going to start introducing rock into the aquarium, we're going to fill it up with salt water, and we're going to begin this nitrogen cycle. Stay with me. And just like that, the water's in, the rock is in, just added my ammonia. So now our, our nitrogen cycle has officially begun. Now we just wait. I've got my test kits. In about a week, I'll test my ammonia. Once I notice that it's starting to go down, I know my nitrogen cycle's on track. Then I'll be waiting for the nitrite. Nitrite is gonna spike and it's gonna stay up for up to three weeks. 
during that time we don't do any water changes. We keep our temperatures between 76 and 78 Fahrenheit degrees. And we just wait four to six weeks guys. We'll be ready to add some fish. We'll be ready to add some corals. If you have any ideas what kind of fish I should put in this tank, please leave the comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, consider subscribing, and if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section and I'll answer them the best I can. So until next time guys, keep calm, start a reef, and get your sleeves wet.